Hello, my fellow Italians, and welcome back to Hetafax. As some of you know, I recently visited Spain and Portugal on my spring break. During my time in Barcelona, I went on a Spanish Civil War tour since it's something I've been meaning to learn about for a while. At the end of my trip, it made me think, how do civil wars work in Hetalia? Every so often, I get requests to talk about civil wars and revolts and uprisings. So today, I am going to discuss civil wars, where they appear, and how they are depicted in Hetalia. And through this, I'm going to come up with a potential set of theoretical rules and apply them to other civil wars that you have asked me about. So let's begin. First, let's take a look at civil wars in Italia that we do see. The Spanish Civil War. Surprisingly, quite a few of you have requested that I talk about the Spanish Civil War, which is strange since most Spaniards don't even like talking about it. To sum it up, people in Spain were starting to hate the king more and more and wanted a republic. Eventually, the king was like, okay, I'll hold elections. But he was afraid of what would happen to him if the republicans won. So he fled to Italy, because he received some info that the republicans were in the lead. But in the end, the monarchist won anyways. But it was too late, the king had fled and there was a fight for power. Eventually, the nationalist or the monarchists won and Francisco Franco was in power for many, many years. The Spanish Civil War is mentioned in some text blocks in the anime and the manga, since the main timeline is in World War II and Spain was neutral because it was recovering from this war. However, there are a few telling details in Hitalia about the Spanish Civil War that I would like to point out. The main one being Romano mentioning how he was shot in the butt while helping Spain out during his civil war. This one detail gives us all the information that we need to determine what side Spain was on. Fascist Italy and Nazi Germany sent aid to help the nationalists or monarchists in the Spanish Civil War to fight against those who wanted a republic. And then there's the anarchists, but that's another story. Italy sent the most support with planes, bombs, guns, and even full troops, which would explain why Romano was there. So in this case, Spain is clearly on the side of the nationalists, those who currently had power in the government. And since Italy is helping him, it further proves that he was fighting on the fascist side. Now let's take a look at China. This appears once in the manga, but little is said about it. All we know is that China is trying to stop the fighting and gets beat up and sick as a result. But the parties in this case don't look like other nations. They are Chinese warlords and other outside actors as it says here. The way this comic phrases things shows that chaos is going on at China's house and not someone else's. It also talks about peace reigning over China. And that's just it. Reigning over China. These are warlords and other actors fighting to be China's boss. In this case, China seems to be a bystander, taking the role of an average citizen since there are people fighting to be his boss. This does not mention that he fought in any way, perhaps since there was more than one power in this case, and so he had no one boss to obey, so he became more of a bystander. The French Revolution it was never shown what side of the revolution France was on, but we did get this image that shows France in this famous painting. We do see France's feelings on the new fashion change, and he is trying to be content, but deep down it disturbs him that all the beautiful fancy stuff is gone. We do see this referring to France in 1793. In this case, France seems to be a bystander like China while all of this is going on. Looking at all these comics where France seems to be standing off to the side, we can assume that he is in a bystander role. Another interesting thing to note is that Corsica is mentioned a lot, but has no personification. There's uprising with people, but it is still portrayed as part of Italy's body for some reason. But this shows that people's uprisings will not necessarily create a new nation. Bloody Sunday this is a very telling event in Hitalia. As seen here, Russia is told to shoot at the rioters, showing that bosses do have the final say in all the nation's decisions. This also shows what side nations will be on when it comes to uprisings, coups, and people's protests, whatever side their boss is on. Here it is also shown that Russia has clearly conflicting feelings, 
but nevertheless has to do what his bosses tell him to do. After looking at all of these examples, we can conclude a few things when it comes to civil wars in Hitalia. Number one, bosses rule over everything. As stated here, countries must obey their bosses, no matter what their personal feelings are. This includes in civil wars, uprisings, people protests, etc. Whoever is in power is who they obey, as seen with Russia and Spain. However, as seen with China, if it is not clear who is in power, the nation takes on the role of a bystander and just watches things unfold. This is mostly in cases such as power vacuums. If there isn't a clear boss, they won't take a side. And obviously, if the country is trying to secede, then that is the side the nation will be on as seen with America and Lithuania. This is also why Romano broke off from the Axis mid-war, because the Allies gained control of the South, while the North still had a puppet regime. Honestly, out of all the problematic things that are in Hitalia, no one has pointed out the fact that the main character represents the fascist puppet state installed by the Nazis. Now that is problematic. This is part of the reason that Hima has stated as to why there are two Italys. As my observations go, a nation's desire reflects those of their people, but their actions reflect those of their government. This is seen with Russia on Bloody Sunday and China in the summary of Chinese history. It is also seen in the comics referring to America's elections, where America doesn't take a specific political stance since most of Americans are apolitical, and rather thinks of elections as a TV spectacle and shows how the average citizen will swing to the next party the next year. Number two, civil wars will make nations sick and or injured. Wars cost money, and we all know what happens when deficits and economic crises happen. Nations get sick. We also know that the same thing happens when natural disasters, accidents, or just mass amounts of people die. A civil war would kind of be like a virus in this case, or maybe a broken limb if a certain region became particularly damaged as seen with China. Number three, no new characters appear. Unless they were nations or autonomous regions before the civil war started, for example, like the Holy Roman Empire or the USSR, they will not be fighting other nations. They are probably fighting other people or are just in a corner suffering, like China. Which is good because this would create a lot of unnecessary characters that would only be around for a short period of time. Perhaps there is a time limit. Maybe nations or, or potential ones that were around for a year or two simply become normal humans and fade into society. However, we do know that if a new identity forms, or if the conflict is about ethnicity or national identity, such as a war of independence, then a new nation character would be involved. However, they kind of exist beforehand. America existed before his independence. Same with Canada and all the other colonies. But we do see potential evidence of possible new characters emerging from conflicts in the series. This is seen with Canada's dream when he worries about Quebec forming due to the conflicts between the French and English population. But Quebec doesn't form because he stays together as one country. Quebec is not a separate character now because the citizens will still identify as Canadian. And now, time for me to talk about what so many of you have requested, Confederate America. If I had an American dollar for every time this is requested, I would be able to buy one of those fancy houses in the South. Yeah, like, one of those things. Looking at this criteria, there probably wasn't a Confederate America at all. In fact, there is actually evidence to suggest that the Confederate States didn't even form. America's glasses are Texas, located in the South, and is Ahogay's Nantucket, which is an island in New York, which was part of the North. Most likely, this is evidence that America didn't split during a civil war and just did his duty for the Union, since that's the side his boss was on and he has Nantucket as part of his hair, so him fighting for the North makes sense. Also, in a bunch of other comics around the American Civil War area, we can see America with his glasses on, further hinting at the fact that there wasn't a second America. It also fits America's character that we should be united kind of guy. But why would Quebec have potential to form and not Confederate America, you may ask? But that's just it. Both had potential to form, but they didn't because the country stayed as one. Anyways, if Confederate America were to form, they would be a kid since the identity is so new. 
If that were the case, it would be America fighting a little kid. This also might mean that Korea didn't fight against the North, but separatist, and then a North Korea formed after the stalemate. Unfortunately, we do not have that many examples of nations that were created out of conflict. Sadly, we don't have too many examples of nations that form as a result of civil conflicts. But there is one character that we can turn to. And unfortunately, we don't have much info on him either, but we can still look at the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. The island of Cyprus had a mixed population of Turks and Greeks that mostly got along fine until Greece attempted to annex Cyprus, forcing them onto separate sides. The war that resulted was not initially intended to give the Turks on the island their own state. It was to keep Greece from annexing the whole island, and as a result, Turkey invaded the north. So. As a result, we can assume that the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus was created out of this conflict and was probably born after the end of this conflict, as before, the Turkish minority was just a minority and the war wasn't a war of independence. Like North Korea, this is just a stalemate that resulted in a new nation. So, analyzing all of this, the rules concerning whether a new nation is created out of fighting in a civil war are as follows. 1. Civil wars do not create new nations, or rather, they are not born because of wars. Nations either exist beforehand as another identity that has been around for years, or are born after a war. Like in most civil war cases, if the identity did not exist beforehand, say it's not an ethnic minority that has existed for hundreds of years, then the nation comes into existence during or after the war is over. Thirdly, the new nation has to be recognized as such in order for it to exist, even if it is by one nation like the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. In order for a nation to prosper and age, a nation needs to be officially recognized. Looking at these rules, we can apply them to other civil wars seen throughout history. I've already talked about America. Now let's see what else you have requested. Russia would have fought for the Red Army during his civil war, since, after ousting the Tsar, that's who came to power. There was just one Vietnam during the Vietnam War. There wasn't a North versus South. It was just Viet Cong versus not Viet Cong. Everyone was still Vietnamese. I think she would have been in a similar situation to China's example. The same would go for Greece and England civil wars. We probably would have seen a similar result in the Boshin War. But Japan would have probably been really conflicted. Tradition versus effectiveness. Hmm. If you don't know what the Boshin War was, just listen to the song Shiro Yamba by Sabaton. China, just in general, is a really tough case. Since China has split apart and reunified numerous times in history, I would say that civil wars in China depends on who is fighting. I believe our current China represents the Han majority that is currently the majority in China. So assuming that any war where it is Han against Han, it's just a civil war. But if it is ethnically divided, such as a battle with Tibetans or another ethnic minority, and those minorities are part of a self-proclaimed nation, in that case, China would be fighting against some other entity. An entity that most likely doesn't exist anymore, kind of like the former Holy Roman Empire states. The rules I have stated may also explain why Himuruya discarded his draft for a North Korea, and why the current Korea is only referred to as Korea. Kima may believe that this is merely a civil war, since the Koreans in the North and the South had no ethnic or identity differences before communism came in. But Hima did state that he was thinking about a North Korea character. Since Prussia became East Germany, it would make sense, but it would be for different reasons since this Northern identity is very relatively new, kind of like the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. A lot of people depict the two as twins, but in reality, it should be our current Korea and a little kid or a young teenager since North Korea was only born in the 1950s or 60s. If another nation were to exist, and honestly, at this point, I believe it would, the two would have a massive age difference like with Cyprus and TNRC. Again, the same would go for Confederate America if they were to ever exist. But I think during the Korean War, I think that Korea would have just been fighting the Soviet Union and communists rather than another entity. 
because the intention was for the communists to take over Korea, not start their new communist state. Anyways, what else is on my list? The Austrian Civil War, or the Februarkämpfe, was about the socialists rising up against the fascists. It was a few battles that were obviously won by the fascists. Since this was an uprising, if Austria was fighting, which I don't think he would be since in modern times he turns into quite a pacifist, he would be against the socialists. This raises another question though. Would Poland have been part of the Warsaw Uprising? I think that he probably wouldn't be directly involved because Poland, in terms of population and land, suffered a lot of damage during World War II. So he would probably be too sick or injured to really participate in anything. He would probably cheer on from a distance though, but if he wasn't too beat up from the war, I would say maybe he would participate since this uprising was backed by the first Polish army. Unfortunately, the same probably isn't true about the Forrest brothers, since they were just unofficial partisans and not official government units. As much as I love the thought of the Baltics and the Forrest brothers, maybe during World War II, but not afterwards. They would definitely be cheering them on from the sidelines, though. And, of course, I have to pander to my Romanian fans and talk about the Romanian Revolution. I think Romania would be forced to work against those uprising like Russia was. But he would definitely have a lot of confliction. And he would probably be in the same state as Russia was in this comic. He would probably be incredibly messed up after that. But the Romanian Revolution took quite an interesting turn. Because in the middle of this fighting, the army switched sides and joined the protesters. So in my theory, this is how the Romanian Revolution would have played out. Romania would start off being against the protesters as ordered to by his boss. But in the middle, like the rest of the army, he would have said, screw it, and then switch to the other side. Honestly, it would make for quite an interesting situation. So there you have it, my theory on how civil wars work in Hetalia, as well as my theory on how other civil wars would have probably been portrayed. I am sorry I ruined all of your OCs, but remember, this is just my theory. Let me know what you think in the comment section, and until then, that was one mark higher on your history test. Thank you for watching Hetafax.